Oh, arise, all the sons of this land. Let the sing of a joy to be free. Praising God and rejoicing to be. Papua New Guinea. Shout again from the mountains to seas. Papua New Guinea. Let us raise the voices and proclaim. Papua New Guinea. I came to prove the point that I'm an Australian, Australian Muslim. I'm here because I want to make a difference in my community. I want to erase the current image that my community, Cronulla, has um, been branded with. I'm here because, in a sense, I want to be able to prove how Australian I am. As ridiculous as that may sound. We are independent and we're free, Papua New Guinea. A group of young Australians is busy preparing for the adventure of a lifetime. Four years after violent race riots became Australia's day of shame, <laughs> two communities unite as one. As the nation prepares for Anzac Day, one group is using the horrors of the past to build a better future. Well, it's all about mateship. You know, if a Labor politician and a Liberal politician can be mates, then so can people from different religions and backgrounds. It's about our communities working together, our young people uh, sharing a future together. That's what our diggers made the sacrifice for. Young Muslims from the urban sprawl in Sydney's west teaming up with surf lifesavers from the sandy beaches of Cronulla. Um, I was sketchless. For me to stay in the in the trek, I had to just stay positive. That was my rule. Just stay positive, no room for negativity. Fresh and demand. I didn't expect it to be this tough physically and mentally. I refuse to do that. I guess just digging inside myself and, and rising above that. Uh, what we saw, saw from both communities previously was shameful and, uh, and as we know uh, both communities were much maligned as a result and I think what we're seeing here is uh, the good stories, the positive stories, uh, the future of both communities standing up and saying um, what their community is all about. What happened back in 2005 during the Cronulla riot was absolute bullshit and we've proven that here. We've kind of expelled that idea. You know, two completely different communities united together by one cause. Um, you know, and the fact that we can stand each other through, you know, all the, the terrors and all the fears and all the frustration, you know, makes us united as Australians. Well, we all travelled here on Australian passports. We all travelled here under the Australian flag and we all have the, the Australianness in our heart. And you know they 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 walked and they talked and things just came out. There were no filters up there. There was nobody to try and impress, and those filters came down really quickly. And I thought, um, you know, especially over the last couple of days, the closeness of the group has just been phenomenal. And and I'm expecting really wonderful things to uh, to develop from this. Ten reporter Brett Mason is with a group of trekkers slogging their way through the jungles of Papua New Guinea. It's day four of the Kokoda mateship trek and so far we've endured stifling hot temperatures, thick mud. The jungle certainly has tested the participants in this initiative. This morning too we're airlifted out to Port Moresby joining dozens of Australian tourists who have been struck down by this unseasonably hot weather. And as a group I'm very, very impressed with them. I think the, uh, you know, the teamwork and the mateship and the, uh, the way they're helping each other is really commendable. Uh, we had a couple of deaths up here last week. Uh, one of them was preventable, uh, the other one wasn't, but it shows you, you can't take the Dakota for granted. It's a savage, treacherous, hazardous trick.
For mortars and machine gun fire and chance surprise attack for safety in the care of doctors at the bottom of the track. May the mothers of Australia, when they offer up a prayer, just mention these impromptu angels with the Fuzzy Wuzzy here. We have never acknowledged the work of the Fuzzy Wuzzy angels. They are the only people in World War II to receive absolutely nothing for their service. They've never been issued with a medal. Many of them were never paid. They were never given a certificate, they were never given a thank you, kiss me ass or anything. They were just sent back to their villages after the war. And we have never issued them with a medal. Ever. And it's an absolute disgrace. And if you ever feel ashamed to be Australian, you come up here and see what they did for us. And we've never ever acknowledged that. <laughs> He's not happy that um, Australians didn't, I mean, you, you, I mean, Australians haven't awarded him for his hard work. So he's not very happy, but he's proud that um, tour, tourists have actually helped him. that everyone, Australian visitors or anyone who comes, in, any tourist that comes to visit him is very happy that you are here to meet him. They went with song to battle. They were young, true of eye, straight of limb, steady and aglow. They faced odds uncounted, but were staunch to the end. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall not grow old, as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember. Lest we forget. Courage, mateship, sacrifice and endurance captures the spirit of the Australian soldiers that fought to the death in many cases for Australia, for the peace, the prosperity and the freedom we had today came at a fairly heavy price, but they paid that price. We should never forget it. شعر الوسواس الخناس الذي